Alright guys, let's look at more examples of what variables can do for us and also how they scale for bigger projects. And along the way, we're also gonna improve our very poor design or non-existing design at the moment and begin to add some layout to the site by just using our variables we define. So let's first go ahead and create some more color variables. And first of all, we're gonna create a theme color variable, which in this case, I'm gonna assign a dark blue color to. And also we wanna create a secondary color, which in this case is gonna be an orange color that is somewhat complementary to our blue color. And let's also add a third color, a ternary color, which is gonna be a light brown color in this case. And now what we can do when we define a link color, for example, for all our links, we can also just use another variable we have. So in this case, I wanna actually have the links as our secondary color, so the orange color. And I can do that by just putting the secondary color variable on the right hand side of this whole variable declaration. So let's go and insert this value for our secondary color into our link color as well. Now the last color I wanna define for now is a menu item color and I'm gonna set that to white because those links are gonna appear on top of our theme color which I'm gonna use as the background color for our header. And now let's go ahead and define our fonts that we want to use. So our text font is supposed to be Verdana, Arial, or any other sensory font. And as our headline font, we want to use a serif font. In this case, I'm going to say Palatino, Linotype, or Georgia, or just some other serif font. So those are our two main font families we want to use. And now we can define some more dimensions. And first of all, I want to create a variable called content width, which is going to be 960 pixels for now. And we're going to keep our header height. And I want to also add a footer height, which I'm going to set to 90 pixels, let's say. All right, so those are all the variables I want to create for now. And you can see that with the amount of variables we have, it may get a little unreadable over time. So what I like to do is I like to create sections of my variables by just using a comment. You can create a one-line comment by using a double slash, or you can create a multi-line comment by using the slash star and then ending with star slash, as you do in many other programming languages. But I'm gonna go for a one-liner, and then I can say here, this is the color section, and down here we have our font section and then we have our sizes section. And that makes it more readable for you and also for other designers working with this file. So now you know when you want to change a font family, for example, you can just go to this font section right here and make all the changes you need and then you're finished. All right, so far so good, but we haven't actually changed any of our design yet. So, well, no, still all the poor design from before because we haven't yet used our variables. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now, first of all, for the h1 to h4, I wanna add a font family, which is gonna be our headline font. And for the p tag, I'm gonna use a font family, which is of course gonna be our text font. And we can also use that variable up here if you want. So we're gonna say this is also gonna be text font. And we're still using our text color here. So that's already included from our previous lecture. So now let's also go ahead and change our link color to this variable called link color, which doesn't include any hover or visited or active yet. So it's just gonna be the plain link selector for now. All right, so now what I wanna do is I wanna set the background color of our header to our theme color, the dark blue color. And for the main menu links, we created this special variable with the color for those because they need a special color to be visible on the blue background color. And that's our menu item color. All right, so let's now go ahead and use our sizes we have defined. 
So the main is supposed to have a width of our content width. And we also defined a height for our footer. So let's go for height. It's going to be the footer height. And the background color is supposed to be our ternary color, let's say. So now let's go ahead and save this. And let's now take a look at our design as it is at the moment. So you can see that all the colors have been applied. We have our dark blue theme color here as the background color for our header. We have our orange links, which is our secondary color. And the footer is on our ternary color. And you can also see that the width is 960 pixels right here. And now I want to quickly center this layout right here and also make these links inline so they don't hang out of our header. So let's hop back to our SCSS file. So let's just include a margin left auto and a margin right auto here and save this. So now you can see that this content section has been centered. And also if we go back again in our main menu, we want to have our list items, our navigation items to display as inline. And that way we're going to see that we don't have these bullet points anymore and it's not hanging out of our header section. All right, so this is looking a bit better than before already. And of course, we're going to still improve this uh, over the course of the following lectures. But for now, we have seen how we can use our variables, how we can structure them to make them as readable and flexible as possible, even in bigger projects, and also how we can then use them in our design. So when exactly should you use variables? Now, first of all, whenever you use the same value very often, put that into a variable. So when you find yourself using a color at three or four different places, or even just two, put that into a variable and make that more configurable and changeable for you in the future and also for other designers to change in the future. But you can also use variables even if they just appear once in your whole code. So let's say our header height here, for example. We are only using this at one place at the moment. And let's assume that this will also stay this way. Now, it's usually still a good idea to use a variable for this because you can configure it much more easily. And it's also much clearer just by looking at the top of your file, what the whole layout looks like in a broad manner. So in this case, we have this static layout with 960 pixels width. We have a header of 60 pixels. And so anyone reading this file has a good picture of our layout just by looking at all our variables at the top of our file without having to go through hundreds or even thousands of lines of code. And this is super important for bigger projects where you really need your files to be as maintainable as possible. And they should be able to be modified not only by you in the future, but also by other designers. And having those variables just makes the whole code much easier to understand and maintain. All right, so that's all I have to say about variables in SAS. If you have any open questions left after watching these videos on variables in SAS, please just let me know in the discussions and I will then answer you personally. I really appreciate any minute you spent in this course and I want you to get as much out of it as possible. So please don't hesitate to get in touch. And I look forward to seeing you in the next lecture.